All right, so let's do the walk and talk here. Uh, as the Cowboys fall in overtime to the Las Vegas Raiders, 36 to 33. And obviously a lot of people are gonna be pointing out in the aftermath of this loss, the officiating. It was bad, there were some missed calls. There were a lot of penalties, a lot of flags, which takes you out of your rhythm. Um, people will point out, or Micah Parsons was probably held a lot more than what was called. Uh, 14 penalties for 166 yards, 166 yards is a Dallas Cowboys record. They also had 110 penalty yards alone on third down. Um, look, the Cowboys are one of the most penalized teams in the National Football League. Uh, it's hard to win when you're penalized that much. And it was a factor in the loss. There's no doubt about it. The, the officiating was a factor. But at the end of the day, you have the football. You are down three with two minutes to go with two timeouts. You, you, you can't control the officials, right? When you play sports, you have to you have to take control. You have to make plays so that you take the so you take the game out of the officials' hands. If you are relying on officials to help you win and lose games, you're not going to win, right? So officials were bad. They they were a factor in the outcome of the game. But at the end of the day, all the bad calls, all the missed calls, everything. Cowboys have the ball, down three, with two minutes to go and two timeouts and they kick a field goal. You hit a touchdown there, you take the game out of the officials' hands. All right, so you might say, well, I mean, the officials missed calls on that drive, which forced you to kick a field goal. And, oh, it's a lot colder outside than I thought it was. And you could be correct. Okay, well, then you get the ball in overtime to start. And then you go three and out. Um, I also think, like, Dak was really good in this game in the fourth quarter, but he missed some throws. He missed some throws in that final drive that leads you to three points. Uh, and he missed some throws in overtime, and he missed some throws throughout the game. So there's going to be a lot of talk about the elite lit eliteness of Dak Prescott. Both things can be true. Dak is a really good quarterback. He put up 375 yards passing, two touchdowns, did not throw a pick. He was good, especially in the fourth quarter. He was really impressive on the drive that tied the game initially at 30, four-play drive. He was really good, but he missed some throws. He did. He absolutely did. Um, so he's, you know, he... You gotta hit. You gotta hit all the throws. When you don't, you're gonna get criticized for it. And um, you know, Dak knows that. And so, he's got to be better. Um, I would imagine not having Amari Cooper and Ceedee Lamb play a role in that. We can't keep completely disregard that. You know, there's a domino effect it has when you're missing two great receivers like that, especially a guy like Amari Cooper who gets open so well. Like that just opens up the field for everybody else. So, I mean, you're talking about missing two of the top 20 receivers in the game, right? I mean, Cooper and, and Lamb are two of the 20 best receivers in the game. Top 20? Top 15? So, like, the fact that they're not playing, that plays a role, right? It's all, it's all in there. It's all part of the goulash. It's bad officials, too many flags. I mean, you hate – the thing is – the Raiders had 14 penalties called to them too, right? So it's 28 total penalties. Uh, Sean Hockley's crew, by the way, called uh, officiating the, the Tampa Bay game, which had 25 total penalties. So let's hope we never have to see that crew again. But, you know, I mean, again, the, the Raiders were penalized for four, 14 times, a lot less yardage. Um, the spot files on pass interference were killer. Uh, Anthony Brown in the corners probably played their worst game. Um, I mean, Anthony Brown played miserably, and it was, you know, it's a game to forget. He's had an up-and-down season this year, Anthony Brown. Uh, he was really bad in the Tampa game to start the year, and the common denominator is a lot of penalties. Sean Hockley's crew on the call. Um, but, you know, look, brutal loss. The Cowboys have now left the door open here for the NFC East where you thought they could start to run away with this division and put their sights on the number one seed and home field advantage. Now, if the Eagles have, have the Giants on Sunday, they come out and win, they're at 500, now at six and six, and now they're only a game and a half behind you. And here's the thing. You look look at the Eagles' schedule. They have the Giants this week, the Jets the following week, and then a heaping helping of the NFC East. So, I mean, you got a dogfight now with the Eagles here to close this thing out, but... We'll see. Cowboys uh, need to improve here. They've lost three of the last four. They look like a Super Bowl team and have not three of the last four weeks. But look, we've seen this offense be elite pretty consistently this year. 
we know there were a lot of penalties that hurt them in this game, um, especially on offense with uh, a touchdown taken off the board from Dalton Schultz and, and whatnot. But they're getting Amari Cooper and, and CeeDee Lamb back next week, so let's see if this thing changes next week with them back. Uh, thanks for checking out today's video. Happy Thanksgiving, everybody. Uh, do me a favor and, and hit the thumbs up on this video. That way more people can find it. And uh, if you're feeling frisky, subscribe because that'd be cool too. I'd appreciate that. And uh, ring the bell. That way you're notified when I post videos like this. But uh, appreciate you checking this out. Again, happy Thanksgiving, everybody. And I'll talk to you next week.